Hi, I'm Diane with South House Designs and we love to host our family and friends and it's almost Thanksgiving. So I am planning our Thanksgiving table. I even have it set. I start putting my place settings out and the, some of the dishes for the food and I realize very quickly, ah, I have the same problem every year. There's no room for a centerpiece with all the food that's going to be on this table. Until I came up with a solution. Instead of my centerpiece being on my table, it's now going to hang over my table where everyone can still enjoy it and it will still welcome our guests and say that this is a special occasion and we are so happy they're here with us. Now let's take a look at how I made this. And this is where it all starts, out in our yard and, well, sometimes the neighbors too. Thanks, Tony! And this is Yakajima grass. Just about any grass will do. So this ornamental grass looks a little different, doesn't it? Well, that's because this is the newly cut and see how the flower heads are a little bit tighter? As they dry, they will naturally open up more and then they will also start to curl a bit. Now, I had never done this project before and I had never really even seen it. So I felt the need to map out how this in my head design was going to go on the wall. So I used some painter's tape to get a general flow of what I was envisioning. And then I created the infrastructure for the design by making a narrow tube of chicken wire that would go the length of this design. My chicken wire is being held in place by two existing picture hooks and then those little bits of painter's tape and that's it and it's held for a couple of weeks now with no issues at all. So let's look at the general how-to and then we'll come back and talk about some real specifics. But in general you've got your empty chicken wire tube, you pick up a couple of pieces of your ornamental grass and just slide the stem up into the tube. And even though gravity would be pulling down on it, it stays put. Don't worry about the length of your st stems yet. We'll go back and um, clip those with the scissors. And scissors are actually the only thing you will need. Well, besides a broom when you're done. But um, there is no wire, no glue, no pins, no styrofoam, no florist tape. You are simply pushing the stems up into the wire and the flower heads will cover all those stems as you build up. I mean, truly, in all honesty, this is the easiest, easiest project. It just looks so impressive and dramatic. The hardest part of the entire thing was making that darn narrow tube of chicken wire using the needle nose pliers and twisting the wire around to catch itself. But I have a new solution I just discovered for it. I am so excited for the next time I make this project because I will definitely be using this new solution I found. Stay tuned because I'm gonna cover that towards the end of the video. As you're creating your garland, if you find a little spot that's a little bare or thin, just lift the other grass heads up and stick in some new stems and do a little fluff job. And here I like to go back and fill in one or two stems here and there, wherever I feel like something's a little missing or it's a little thin. And see, that's got a very long stem, but don't worry about that because you can go back and here you'll see where it's coming out up there. So we're gonna go back and clip that. And that's how it's done. Simple, right? So now that you've seen how I assembled it, let's back up a little bit and talk about the two ends and really the focal point. From the focal point, one set of your grasses are going to go that way and the other set is going to go that the opposite direction so that the ends both contain the flower heads or the grassy heads so the stems are all going to meet in the center from either direction and then i covered that meeting spot with just some of my dried hydrangeas that i foraged out of the hydrangea trees in our front yard also so those are just the dried hydrangeas 
and they are stuck into the chicken wire exactly the same way. And I added a few um, faux natural colored leaves and a few magnolia leaves to get that brown earthy tone that would pull from the gourds and give a little bit of contrast, a little bit. Now that you've seen glimpses of the whole project, let's take a quick step back. So let's look at what might be the most intimidating part of the project is getting started. And you'll see it's really nothing. I don't know why it intimidated me. Each stem just slides right into place. And I intentionally started with long stems thinking that that would help keep them from just sliding right back out before I had more volume in there to hold everything tight together. Continue working the same way along your tube of chicken wire. Now, if you get to the point where you feel like you need some of your stems curved, like at a real extreme curve in your chicken wire, run the long stem between your thumb and index finger, and that will break the stiff fibers inside the stem a bit. So then your stem can have a curve to it if that's what your design requires. And then periodically go back and trim off the excess stems with your scissors as you are building your garland. So I think you have the idea now. Let's do a quick fast forward to where we get to the point where I think I'm at my focal point. And then I wanna trim all my excess stems that are still hanging around. And then I'm gonna grab a bundle of the grass and hold it up going the other direction and just make sure that that's what I want it to be like. And that looks good. Now you could start right here with your grasses going the opposite direction, just like this. But really it works better if you start at the other end and work this way, because working like that, you would have to lift the grass heads every time to put the new stems underneath them. Working from the end, you put them in and then the next bundle cover those the stems. So it's just a little bit easier if you work from the ends to your focal point. And that's really as easy as it was. And I didn't spend a dime on the entire arrangement because I foraged all of the materials and the chicken wire, I took apart an old structure to put that one together I was too lazy to go to the store and get more chicken wire at the time. But so as difficult as the chicken wire was to work with to make my tubing look, after I had it all done, of course, I discovered this cool ribbon comes in a spool like this at Hobby Lobby. And it's also available at Amazon. I'll put a link down below, but you can pull it out a little bit wider and then roll it to make a tube. It'll be very similar to that, a little narrower, which won't be bad because it'll hold the grass even tighter together. And that can go up on the wall instead. But next time I'm going to use that new chicken wire ribbon I found and make it even easier on myself. I hope this inspires you. I hope you try the same thing yourself and use the idea of taking a centerpiece off the table and moving it up on the wall for those occasions when your table is overflowing with too much food and there's no room for the pretties. Thanks so much for joining me today for this surprisingly simple project. Now, if you would help me beat the algorithms, I would really appreciate a share and a subscribe and a like. Thank you so very much and hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving.